Welcome to the SVG TV News for Thursday, December 24th. I am Khalil Cato with the details and we do sincerely apologize for the late start this evening. Two new COVID-19 deaths have been recorded here, bringing the death toll from the viral illness to 81. The victims are a 71-year-old male who died at home after a respiratory illness and tested positive for COVID-19 on Tuesday as part of the post-mortem assessment. The patient was determined to have died from COVID pneumonia. The other person is a 26-year-old male with underlying conditions who tested positive for COVID-19 on December 14th and was admitted to the isolation ward at the Milton Cater Memorial Hospital, then died on December 22nd of COVID pneumonia. Both patients were unvaccinated. Meanwhile, 11 new COVID-19 positive cases were reported from 146 samples collected on Tuesday, resulting in a positivity rate of 7.5%. 23 new rapid antigen positive results were reported on Tuesday as well from flu clinics. On Wednesday, 7 new positive cases were reported from 49 samples collected with a positivity rate of 14.3%. 20 new rapid antigen results were also reported from the flu clinics. There is currently one patient admitted for COVID-19 at the Argyle Isolation Facility who is unvaccinated. Nine patients have been admitted to the COVID-19 ward at the, Memo- at the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital, all of which are vaccinated. 14 recoveries were noted over the reporting per- period. 596 cases are currently active. 5,828 cases of COVID-19 and 5,100 and that should be 5,151 recoveries have been recorded in St. Vincent and the Grenadines since March 2020. And with the long holiday weekend coming up, the Ministry of Health is ensuring that COVID-19 vaccines are available at all clinics in the absence of vaccination drives. So says Health Promotions Officer in the Ministry, Shanika John. Not taking any drives this weekend in particular, but into next week we do have a few pop-up drives to get those second dose persons available. So making it more accessible to those persons. So we would be on the road next week in particular as well. In the meantime, if you're interested in getting vaccinated, you can do so at your nearest vaccination site within your health district. We're still operating. Um, just this week, we had a hundred and something persons at the Solidarity Car Park. So we're still there. We're still going in spite of um, if persons are a little hesitant or delaying vaccination at this time, the Ministry of Health is ensuring that it is still available. John said four COVID-19 vaccines are currently available in the state with the Cuban vaccine, Abdallah, the latest to be added to the stock. It's available at the vaccination sites within the district. Um, the senior nursing officer, Sister Russell, has made provisions for that as well. And also um, to ensure that persons are available. Ideally, we would like to administer them in groups of 10, and that is really to avoid wastage. Um, and it's a three-dose vaccine that is taken at a two-week interval period. We have AstraZeneca, we have Sputnik V, which is the first and second component. The first component is registered as Sputnik Light, which is also still available. We have the Pfizer vaccine and we have the Abdella vaccine. As part of the rebuilding process of SVG, the International Organization for Migration, IOM, has set a target of rebuilding 1,000 homes before the start of the next hurricane season on June 1st, 2022. The program coordinator of the IOM in SVG, Jan Willem Wegdam, said the houses to be rebuilt would be in the orange, red, and yellow zones of La Soufrière. Wegdam said that such a project requires all hands on deck. I'm also currently talking uh, with an, an, um, a coalition of partner organizations, uh, including the Rotary Club, some international NGOs, um, and the government, to see if we, if there's a way that we can combine forces and uh, complement each other in the repairs of as many uh, homes as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have had the first meeting. Uh, also, we tried to involve the donors uh, into that to say, hey, we have the capacity to to repair. Um, and I just put the blunt statement in there of, um, hey, wouldn't it be great to repair 1,000 homes before the next hurricane season? Yeah, let's let's make this happen. Let's combine. Let's uh, let's uh, let's combine the efforts, the materials, the labor, uh, the funding, and uh, the expertise, and and uh, let's make this happen. Um, so I truly hope because this is the moment that we can ask. It, it is before Christmas, and it's also in the international humanitarian world. Um, there's only a limited amount of time that you can keep the attention of the donors. 
Wagdam, who has worked on similar programs in the aftermath of hurricanes in the Caribbean region, is confident that the project to rebuild 1,000 homes in about four months' time is quite possible. And who are the donors? Eh? Those are, for instance, eh, right, this is, this is other countries like the United States or uh, England or Europe or Japan and the friends, the friend in the, the friend, the friends of uh, Saint Vincent, and the banks uh, we can uh, we can approach, um, and therefore this is a really good time to to reach out to the banks. Uh, otherwise, hey, they move on and they uh, they uh, fund other emergencies, uh, Haiti or the next hurricane or whatever else happens. I think we have the capacity to do it. Um, it all depends on money. Uh, so we need to raise, raise, raise a considerable amount of money and pull it together and work together to, 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 to make that happen. Um, it is possible. Um, I'm, let, let me put it, I'm hopeful. So if I speak for IOM, but also some of the partner organizations. So I, uh, before I worked in uh, in Dominica after uh, Hurricane Maria, and there we repaired 650 homes uh, within a time period of, 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 of one year. Um, we did the same in the Bahamas uh, and partner organizations, and I, I mentioned a few. Meanwhile, with 104 persons still in seven shelters, the IOM program coordinator said he will be at several shelters on Christmas Day to ensure everyone has a good Christmas. A special period for me is the first, the first Christmas here in, uh, in St. Vincent. I see all the preparations and the special traditions of the nine mornings and the nine nights. And, uh, but I also feel very, very uh, involved with, with the displaced people. Um, like here in, in Golden Years and in seven, seven other facilities, currently there are 107 people in, in the official homes and I know for sure that a lot more are displaced and staying with friends and family or in other, other places um, uh, except for their homes. Um, so IOM, we, we try to do our little bit. We're, I'm currently organizing with uh, the, the Ministry of Education and NEMO uh, that we provide a Christmas lunch uh, for all the people in the emergency shelters. So that's going to be a great event uh, to, to show some compassion and to show some celebration. Um, and um, uh, so, yeah, we're looking forward to that. Um, and I think it's also a moment of the year that we have to look forward. And basically, these people are here, but we have to work hard on finding permanent solutions. According to the post-disaster assessment, a total of, of 35,336 homes were damaged or destroyed by the volcanic eruption, 104 of which were severely damaged and 4,240 moderately damaged. Downtown Kingstown was busy today with hundreds of people doing their last-minute Christmas shopping. Middle Street was the busiest as a number of stores opened their doors before 7 a.m. Most of the shoppers were buying curtains, mats, and other household items, as well as toys. Our news team spoke with some of these shoppers, and there were mixed reactions about the season. I love Christmas bag. <laughs> love it to me. You can't send him any tomorrow. Oh, my menu is lasagna, stew pork, a fall, some green peas, and veg. You understand? And masala be. Are you ready for Christmas? Boxing in just for relax. I make a pot of green pea soup. People say I don't really have no plans because right now I don't depend on Christmas. If I didn't have anything, I don't depend on Christmas. As long as I know God gives me health and strength. And I live with my, and I have my children and them around me. So the fun to that, I do have no problem. You know, like where you live was very dead. And, but it's still glad for, for the neighbors and them around the area that you know well the neighbors and them for the neighbors know well you didn't have anything the neighbor will stretch their hand for you. Just walking through the city, yeah, it's pretty festive because there's a lot of parang for sure, a lot of parang music, 20 people, yeah. Spare my life, I left to wake and see in the morning, I thank God for the day. But I'm baking and anything, just normal, stay home, just normal. I'm doing nobody home, so the money in there, you know, <clears throat> the money in there right now for do the baking. Tomorrow is Christmas Day, the beginning of the three-day holiday in SVG. Meanwhile, vendors in Kingstown came out today to cash in on the Christmas Eve shopping, hoping for a good day of sales, which they says have been slow, but picked up in the last few days. 
The vendors our news team spoke with say they are still grateful for the little they have made, noting that people were not spending as much as anticipated. The business is kind of slow because the economy get, get tight in spending over. The power drive is not there. The spending power is not there. Christmas, well, we're trying to make out that day before Christmas. It didn't like before, you know? Well, we try the punch board, and when you look at us here, over here, we have some nice dresses. So it, it will catch on to the new year, I will see. You know, because it's the latest in style, and it's a Vincent and Handy won't be by me. I made this stuff, you know, and we have the national dress too. So any visitors come around and need any national thing, face masks, like these, right? Have the face masks and so on, you know? It's, it's my mother business, and she's doing it from since she's young, so i just coming up, so i just starting it for myself, so like, say, four years now, I'm doing it. Yes, please. How the business this time around? Well, the business this time, it's good, it's good, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a fast money-making thing. And for the first month now, we have to be selling because we have enough food. And if we cut me the street, of the pocket people just shopping, it's all right. I will have a problem with that. Amidst the challenges faced in the red zone due to the eruption of the La Soufrera volcano, Point Village was named the overall winner in the Vinlec Best Community Lighting Competition. The results were announced this morning at the culmination of the National Nine Mornings Festival at the Victoria Park. After six consecutive years of winning the Best Lit Private House competition, Olivia Da Silva of Canaan was dethroned by Jimmy Samuel of Rillan Hill. Da Silva took the second position. The best lit commercial building went to Carey's Hazel's Kingstown with Jack's Enterprises in second place. In the zone category for the best lit community, Rosebank Village Square took the first position in zone 1, Sign Hill Intersection for zone 2, Richland Park for zone 3 and Point Village Square in zone 4. The best nativity scene prize went to the Roseau Recreation Park. Deputy Chairman of the Nine Mornings Committee, Lennox Bowman, said that they were pleased with all the presentations this year. This year, this year, we said that the theme was a festival of lights, hope in a darkened world, and we are so pleased with the participation, especially in the area of private houses. The late Jonathan Sarge Nichols and Javel Frank, who served as Masters of Ceremony for the annual National Nine Mornings Festival, were this morning recognized for their contribution over the years. The families of the late MCs were presented with their pictures framed and an autograph book which was signed by persons who, partic who participated in this year's celebration. Chairman of the National Nine Mornings Committee, Orandi Bomani Charles, and Deputy Chairman Lennox Bowman expressed gratitude to the family of the late Jonathan Nichols and Javel Frank for their contribution in the development of the festival, noting that their legacy will live on. But we remember their efforts, their dedication, their love for the festival. And we've been paying honor and tribute to them all festival long. I want everyone inside here, please, to stand, give a round of applause to Jonathan Nichols and Javel Frank. Thank you so much, we appreciate you. We appreciate Javel. She was my dear friend and she will be missed. Once, every once in a while, a really special Vincentian talent emerges in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Someone who gives, uh, who has given his life to making St. Vincent a better place in so many areas of endeavor. One such person is Jonathan Sarge Nichols. We at the Nine Mornings Committee has benefited tremendously from his skill both as an administrator and as an artist, he was one of our best, the better MCs we have. Nichols and Frank's families thank the Nine Mornings Committee and the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines for the love. It is an honor to receive this tribute on behalf of my late husband, Jonathan Nichols, in acknowledgement of his profound contribution to the Nine Morning Festival. My husband, Jonathan Nichols, was able to give himself over fully in every moment. I want to wish everybody Merry Christmas. 
And on behalf of my mother, Merry Christmas. I would just like to say I want to thank everybody and I appreciate what you guys have done on behalf of my mom and I know she appreciates it as well. 50 listeners of sister station Magic 103.7 FM were selected as the winners in this year's Christmas promotion. The winners received several prizes which were presented yesterday which included, several, which included high room drinks, irons, kettles, wines, juicy, baskets of groceries and more. Sales and Marketing Promotions Officer of Parents Company, SVG Broadcasting Corporation, Keisha Bilinji, gave a brief overview of this year's promotion. Despite the challenging year, Christmas with Magic 1 and 3, 7, 91, 5 was no different with our annual Christmas promotions. This year was Christmas Genie, where callers had to choose from three categories of questions and if answered correctly, they got to choose their own prize from three options. This has never been done before, but it's 2021, so why not? We also had our Christmas Parang sing-along, which was equally as exciting. Listeners competed against each other in song and the winners were determined by the callers. And for the first time, we had a Sunshine Christmas promotion. Children would call and sing any song of their choice to win a snack bag from Better Brands Distributors, the local agent for Sunshine and Casey Snack. Bilinji thanked all the sponsors who made this year's Christmas promotion possible. I want to sincerely thank all our sponsors who has contributed to these promotions, including Finishing and Furnishing, General and Maritime Agencies, ECBI, Gunstaff's Liquor, Thomas Wholesale, The Modern Place, St. Vincent Bury, all the sponsors who has contributed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We want to say thank you to all who participated in our promotion. Continue listening to Magic 1037 915. Have yourself a blessed Christmas season. Some of the winners expressed gratitude for the prizes awarded to them. I am quite excited, really, to win my case of High Run Soft. It saved me a couple of dollars, so I'm happy. That's great. Always happy to be a part of Magic. Yeah, Thanks. I love to be a part of the, 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 the magic with Christmas, so we say it. Yeah, that. All right. I, am, I just want to thank Magic Radio for giving me the opportunity to win this beautiful knife set from Finishing and Furnishing. I really appreciate it, and Merry Christmas to all. Magic Radio is the best. No other one can test. We're winning so much of gift at Christmas time. We thank you all for everything, everything that we receive. Thank you, Gonzalo Lakers and Magic. Everybody have a blessed Christmas. Thank you for j and Enterprises and Magic. First of all, I would like to say thank to Magic, my station, every day, every night. And I must say thank you for Juicy to donate um, this Case this case of juicy to me. Magic Radio is the best I know. Everyone just love this radio. There is no competition throughout this nation. It's the best in the West. No other contest.